25 years ago you guys started all this? Yeah. What's your uh, what's your favorite memory together? I don't know, you know, remember you said how long the burgundy label seemed like it was 20 years? Yeah. So how much fun they must have had? My favorite memory, and Rick, I mean, with walking in the store with Anita Beat playing, I'm not playing, um, Anita Beat selling, they had sold a box of records, and the motherfucker who owned the records didn't, know, it was definitely not played, no radio, nowhere, no nothing, and we had sold a box of records. And just because of the logo you created, the logo you created, said, oh, that's the next Def Jam. It was already after one record. And the only record that before that only sold whatever, you know, singles at the time, I, uh, you know, it's yours, but the, the fact that we were selling the records and then we took it out the box and played for the owner, he's like, oh shit. So I remember that. That was good. <laughs> Is that good? Is that the way it happened? Went down? Went to that I little don't remember, record. But little... I believe you if you said it. Yeah, nigga, you, was, you were right there. We walked in the record store, that little cool record store that sold DJ's I was records. On dust. <laughs> no, I, no, I was smoking dust, nigga. I don't you remember was sober. anything. I don't remember anything. Rick, what's your favorite memory? The one you do remember? I don't have any specific favorites. It was just a whole exciting That's roller coaster ride. All of it was really fun. I bet Rick, so he's such a yogi, he's so present sometimes. Or at least he, you know, he gets that he wants to be, which is kind of a big part of you know the process, right? He, oh, there is no one moment. You know, it's like the, what's your favorite record? The one on the radio, motherfucker. The one playing right now might be my favorite record. You know, it could be. And then an hour later, another record plays it. No, this is my favorite. You know, that's how it works. And how you feel when you hear that record at that moment. What does it inspire? That's when you know, you know your favorite record is Radio Suckers Never Play Me. I just look at Mr. That Farrakhan. Good. Right, right. Well, Farrakhan's a prophet. I think you just left him. You know, uh, a lot of Chuck D. I, I said something today, which is really funny. When I woke up, I felt we were saying so much. Out of meditation, I was saying, I was saying so much about how much I love Chuck D. I love Chuck D. And I think that he was the artist that really inspired me the most from Def Jam. And then I'll hear something else and it'll make me feel that way. But really, I more often than not, I'd say Chuck D. But what the person that turned into it, not discount anybody else is becoming more uh, sweet or humble or nice or, you know, or, uh, 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 refined, you know, in terms of a giver or a sweet person. LL Cool J has become an amazing person. LL Cool J has become an amazing person, and he's also consistently been, you know, hot. He's hot now on CSI. You know, it's been a lot of years. He's the first artist on Def Jam. He's still hot. He can't be here now because of how hot he is right now. And it's not, it's a real thing. He would love to be in perform, but he really got something very important he's doing right now. So that's nice. I don't know. I mean, I can say Jay-Z sometimes plays, you know, makes great records. Ain't no niggas a record I love a lot, a whole lot. But, I, you know, I think about Public Enemy a lot more, probably. You guys ever think about the legacy you, live, you left, you know, 25 years later, that now in every street corner? I, I think it's, we're pretty much moving forward. I mean, I don't think we look back too much. That's why I've been hanging out with Rick, because I don't give a fuck. I really don't give my legacy. I hope if I, not even the legacy of it, so much as my work. I hope is to be different every day in terms of giving. It changes a lot, but I like my footprint to be bigger all the time. Forward to do more, to help more people, to even to do more entertainment. Whatever it is I'm doing, I like that, and I don't think too much about what happened. And you know, and I've been talking a lot about the minister's legacy. How I want to help him. I don't think about that. It's nice today. But I'm not a celebratory person. I don't look back. I don't have a gold fucking record. Not one. There's Son in the Hamptons. It's not true. I have one or two. But all the millions of records, I don't have any of them. I don't have, you know, I just don't keep shit. Like that. I don't have no photos. And I don't feel like I'm lost because of it or that, you know, oh, no, these are relics. It would be nice to auction them off for charity if I had them. If I could find those gold records, I could put them on eBay and give the money away. But I don't need to stare at something to remember or... At this point, maybe when I get old, I'll be like, the fuck? But right now, it has not been a legacy-driven, um, it's not part of what I think about. It's a lot of rap, say the same shit. It's 